Phil Williams from the Phil Williams Show. Man, miss you guys dearly. Have some very, very big things that's going on with myself and some of the programs that I do in the community. And so it's uh, been keeping me being kind of scarce on these posts. So trust me, I miss you guys dearly. Hey, what's up, Ken, Ken Wardo? How you doing, Gary? What's up, Christian? Kevin? Kevin McGarry, what's up, Kevin? <laughs> what's up, man? Long time no see. Hey, right, Laura, how you doing, Laura? Hey, again, welcome. Come on in, guys. What's up, Robert? And I'll do this for a couple seconds here. What's up, Liza? Yes, man. Trying to stick it out here? Is that what you're trying to do? Until we're done. That's right, Laura. I'm with you right there. What's up, Ken? Much more. What's up, Ken? What's up, Robert? Joyce, Glorine, and my man, Ken Thompson. I'm telling you, man, if I had a hockey team, Ken Thompson would be my enforcer. He'd be the one that was running around out there kicking with some kicking with some straight patriot conservative butt. He'd be whooping them, doing it. What's up, Ken? What's up, Billy? Christian, yes, good to see you too. Christian Hill Jackson, good to see you. I miss you guys dearly. Janice Barlow, what's up? How you doing? Yeah, I know it's a rough day, Janice. I've been with you. Trust me, rough day. Especially for us people that care about this country. Very rough day, watching what we're watching. What's up, Shane, John, and Lisa? What's up, Lisa? Hey, everybody, united for freedom. Doreen, what's up, Doreen? United for freedom. It's a group that I'm part of on Facebook, United for Freedom. What's up, Amy? How you feeling? And, yeah, it's Phil time. <laughs> Phil Fridays. <laughs> Friday Phil. Get your Friday Phil. Yeah. But anyway, United for Freedom is a group that I'm a part of on Facebook. We are a group that's designed to hold our politicians accountable. Let them know, especially the ones that raised their hand and said that they're conservatives. Again, what's up, Doreen? UFF. They, if you say you're a conservative, then United for Freedom is going to be there holding you accountable for that. But guess what? We're doing something very special at United for Freedom this weekend. We are going from a closed group or private group to a public group. We call it an open house. We're having an open house with United for Freedom. So this weekend we'll be going public so that you can come in, see what we're doing, take, parts in, take part in our, in our missions. We are a mission-oriented group. We are not endorsing, pushing, pulling one candidate. We are holding the ones that said, I am a conservative. We're holding you accountable. So please have your friends and family. Check out United for Freedom. It's going to be public this weekend. It is our United for Freedom open house. And come on in and see what we're about. And if you're a conservative and you believe, even if you're not a conservative, but if you believe in accountability, trust me, you would like to join our group. United for Freedom. It is our open house this weekend. Please come in. Now, why am I here today? I'm going to start here. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a conservative community activist. I don't know if you guys have ever seen a black conservative community activist before, but I'm one. And I get blessed to talk to hundreds and hundreds of young, quote unquote, liberal voters Every day, every day of the week of the year, every day. I had a conversation the other day with a group of young people. And, and I believe that this is going to be pretty good to share with what's going on here. The conversation, really, when I looked at conservatism in our country from a bigger perspective than what I was sharing with them from a community perspective, it pissed me off. I'm telling you, I was pissed. And this is what the conversation we were having. I was talking about how desensitized these young people have become. The freedoms and the, the things that we have, the, the ability that we have here in the United States of America. I'm sharing with these young people, I'm witnessing how desensitized they have become. They no longer get squeamish when they see blood and brains and stuff because they play video games to where they can create this kind of stuff. They have become desensitized. So for me to have a conversation with them and, and use how they can be killed and riddled with bullets and, and all this blood and gory stuff, that no longer is a deterrent for them. Matter of fact, to some of them, it's like, wow, that'd be cool. You, they're no longer sensitive to 
people being shot or stabbed, people being raped or robbed. They're no longer sensitive to that. They're desensitized because it's become commonplace to them. It's become so normal. It's become a, a thing of recreation. Grand Theft Auto is like recreation for goriness and rid ridiculousness. Matter of fact, the more blood, the more guts, the more glory, the more views they get on YouTube. Now it's become an accomplishment. Doing something positive, like even like what I'm doing, doing something positive doesn't get millions of views. But let me do something ridiculous. Phil Williams would be probably one of the biggest New conservative talk show host if I had a sex tape out or something like that. This is, this is how we are. This is how we've become in this country. Our young people are desensitized to these thing, kind of things to keep them safe. We are having an opioid crisis in the United States of America. How are we having this, this opioid or this pills and dope and epidemic? Why? Because we've become desensitized. We've elevated people that said, I'm stressing. What do I do when I stress? I smoke a joint. Um, I'm, I'm depressed. What do I do? I take a pill. Everything is medicated now. And then now we've desensitized people to this stuff to where now our kids for recreational purposes, because they feel that in order to remove their stress, they need to have recreational participation in drugs. And now this thing is out of control. It's out of control. When talking to these young people, I said, this is how out of control this is. If you've seen somebody get raped, stabbed in the eyeball with a butcher knife on both sides, there is a, a small part of your group of young people that would say, wow, that was cool. Your conscience wouldn't have kicked in and said that was wrong enough. There is a small group of people that would have said that was cool. Do it again. Because our young people have become desensitized. Thanks to the internet, they can go out and create a group of a bunch of people stabbing people in the eyes with knives, taking their lives, leaving them blind, maimed, whatever, burning with acid. And there's a group of Americans out there that would say that was cool. Do it again. This is where we live in now. Having this conversation with these young people, I'm looking at them in the face and I said, are any of you guys brave enough to raise your hand and say that you would have thought that was cool? To watch something demeaning, degrading, despicable, disgusting happen to another human being. Are you brave enough to raise your hand and say you would have watched that on YouTube and told your friends about it like it was cool? I had three young men that was brave enough to raise their hand. What's got me pissed? I am watching the president of the freaking United States. I am watching a group of Americans applauding this dude. On the verge of starting, continuing, finishing, or whatever, a nuclear war. And I'm watching a small group of Americans go, about time, awesome, this guy's got balls, he's brilliant, he's this, he's that. Do you understand what this dude is playing with? Our troops. You hear all these people talking, but you do not hear that this five time draft dodging use our troops to raise money, never ever pay off the veterans. You're listening to this dude willing to use our troops to satisfy whatever this fool's mouth wants to pop off at. And you guys are applauding him saying that's presidential about time. You guys have become so desensitized to what is going on with a nuclear weapon to where you guys will be like that, those three kids and raise your hand in the room and say, this man is talking about our troops. Here's how you become desensitized. Because we have all this technology and stuff, 
And these politicians for years have been pumping this bull crap about we'll fight them over there versus over here. It's better to fight them over there than over here. They're talking about killing human beings. Killing them with conventional weapons should be the last resort. But nuclear weapons? Especially for the reason this dude is doing it. Have we lost our understanding of what this freedom means? Do you understand what being the most powerful nation, the most freest nation on the, in the world, do you understand what that means? Have you become so desensitized? That you are that small group that Donald Trump is applauding. There's tens of millions of people that agree with me. Over what this dude is starting a war over? So are you, but what am I? Fire and fury? This man is playing with our troops. Let me tell you guys something. I am a veteran. I am a disabled veteran, wartime disabled veteran. As a soldier, we practice these war things. As a soldier, we follow directions. As a soldier, we get brave. As a soldier, we follow the instructions of our commander in chief. But let me tell you guys something. There is no freaking president in, this, in the history of this country that is better than our troops, that is braver than our troops. Our troops should be the first and the foremost thing that you think about whenever you hear anybody popping off the mouth and putting our troops in harm's way. They deserve that. They protect your freedom. This dude is going to be gone. Our troops are still going to be there. Our troops were there before this guy even thought about even hoodwinking this country and become the president. Our troops demand us not to applaud somebody arguing and measuring Peters with some dude over there in North Korea. Our troops deserve and demand better than a president that goes out there and uses bumper sticker slogans to make himself look tough. When we're out there practicing and defending this country against enemies foreign and domestic, when we're out there practicing, let me tell you something that happens to us gung-ho soldiers that will run into a burning building for this country, for your freedoms and for my freedoms. Let me tell you something about these soldiers. While we're practicing with blanks and things of this nature, our whole disposition changes when they start giving us live ammo. It changes. It's no more, hua, hua, yeah, rah. it's not that. When we start getting live ammo, it gets real to us. We know that we have the ability to take and end another human being's life. We as soldiers are trained to go do what we're told. And the only thing we can pray for when we start receiving that live ammo is that the person that's asking us to go kill another human being is doing it for a good reason. For our safety and for our freedom. Even if we have to go free other people from their dictator or something like this. That's what we're praying and hoping when that ammunition starts going into our magazines and it's not blanks. This is no longer an exercise. It's just got real. You have become so desensitized because of the media projecting that no president can ac has accomplished anything. And now all of a sudden, Donald Trump says, I'm going to go blow up somebody. And then this is an accomplishment because why? It's different than the last president. It's different than the presidents before. There is a reason why we just don't go blow up people, people. There's a reason why these other presidents let the Kim Jong-il family bump their gums with all this foolishness and, and not speak in that same kind of foolishness back. There's a reason for this. Because these words have real consequences. There's real lives that get blowed up.
There's real people that lose all their destiny that God has for them. These are real people. It doesn't make us punks. It didn't make Clinton a punk. It didn't make Bush a punk. It didn't make Barack Obama a punk. Letting that dude run off at the mouth and us being the bigger country saved lives. It saves lives. But responding back to him with the same childish bullcrap bumper sticker? Our troops demand better than that from their commander in chief. All Donald Trump is concerned about is his poll numbers. All Donald Trump is concerned about is that you're not talking about Russia right now. That's all he's concerned about. And then he said it himself. There's tens of millions. We have 320 plus million people here. 10 or 20 million people saying it's okay for you to do this. That's that small group of people that are desensitized to knowing that lives will be taken. Our soldiers' lives will be put in harm's way. So you got to ask yourself, is it worth it? Just so Donald Trump can prove a point and prove that he's big and bad or do something that no other president has done. These are real lives, people. Our military is put together with the hope and the prayer that we have a person that says, if you go to die defending this country, it's not over because somebody said something bad about me. He looked at me sideways. He made me tweet something. If he says one more thing, if he looks at me cockeyed at one more time, that's going to be his behind. Come on, people. Our troops. Forget Trump. Our troops. Our troops are going to be asked to go destroy other human beings for what? For what? To satisfy this lifelong liberal and his new toys? First of all, what he did in Syria is because Russia cleared the way for him to do something with no collateral damage. It didn't mean anything. It didn't accomplish nothing. It was Donald Trump to get to play with his new toys. Mother of all bombs in a place where you don't know what the hell you're doing, where things are at, that kills people. We should not be looking at this as our first, second, third, or fourth resort. Our troops that are going to be asked to put human beings' lives that they have taken on their conscience, on their Christian conscience, atheist conscience, or whatever, Muslim conscience, whatever. Our troops that we're asking to put other human beings' lives being taken on their conscience deserve something better than a response to a freaking tweet. Our troops demand something better from us in America that they're signed up. You're not. That 10 million people is going, Donald Trump is the bomb. You're not signed up for the service. I wonder how many of you guys are veterans. You know why Donald Trump has so many generals in his cabinet? Because generals became generals by following orders of the president. Donald Trump wants people that's going to do what he says. But, but... One of the generals, he says something very, very, the, I don't have to tell you statements about war. That dude is not trying to go to war. He is not trying to take them, them troops to go kill people, to prove the points that Donald Trump wants to be proved. I'm pissed. In closing. Donald Trump is making America look like a bunch of irrational people when we are the beacon of freedom to the whole world. Russia is about to look better because of Donald Trump. China is sounding more better than Donald Trump. Everybody else is sounding like they're not trying to take a bunch of people's lives. And Donald Trump sounds like the only one. And all they took was some little orange or I mean, round boy in... in North Korea to say the things they've been saying for years for Donald Trump to get unhinged. There is a small group of Americans 
that are just like that group of kids I was talking about. We'll see people die burning in flames, houses destroyed, lives destroyed, and they'll go, wow, do it again. There are people out there that says, yes, go blow them up. We'll make money. And there's a president that says, as long as I keep talking about this, nobody's talking about Russia. Come on, people. Our troops deserve better. They have the commander in chief that they have. Our troops are more awesome than any commander in chief they will ever have. But the commander in chief that they have now is going to ask these troops to go take other people's lives. For what? I'm pissed. And you should be too. Hey, share this video. Come to United for Freedom's open house. I love you guys. Miss you. Peace.